All right, this week on Six Stars Only, we're explaining where the name of our podcast come from, how Jake and I actually met, and how we started making weird stuff, like a photo shoot with a Valentine's Day pizza. Yes, that really happened. Listen on. All right, so uh, how are you doing, Jake? I'm good, man. How are you? Good. I'm tired, but uh, I'm good. Oh, awesome. Uh, I guess I should mention what this podcast is now that we're six mm. episodes in. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a good... <laughs> do, you know what, do you know what Six Stars Only is? Let me tell you. Uh, six Stars Only is the show where we are practicing out in the public as we learn to become fearless video creators. So we're making all the mistakes out in public so you can learn from them. We are learning from our role models who are creators to help us learn to make a uh, YouTube videos uh, and just make this habit of creation that doesn't suck because Mm -hmm. if you are like us we're going to talk about our stories in a minute but we spend a lot of our lives being uh wannabe creators and we don't want people to be like that we want to be like your um (laughs) well-meaning guides who can guide you from uh this wannabe mire doldrum junk to actually getting stuff done and making stuff that makes you feel satisfied and uh, whole as a creator is that too yeah, definitely is that too pie in the sky i don't know is that fair yeah i mean i think that's good i think i liken it to listen to us talk about how we made all these mistakes that way you don't have to so you don't have to be like us and almost burn down our apartment and be like me and make bad youtube videos for like a decade but uh no that's true that's a that's a really good uh description of our podcast so um, i think a lot I, of it kind of stemmed from being sick of being those like total wannabe creators so this podcast was a big first step of like all right we're gonna force ourselves to make stuff so you guys have to like so we're doing it in public like matt said to where we have to be accountable for our stuff that way we have to make stuff now exactly we We gotta make it. it Yeah, and and so we've been doing a lot of episodes. Uh, we we've tried a few different ones. We've done some practical ones. We've done some more strategic ones. We've done uh one or two about kind of some stuff that we've worked on. Uh, but we had some people write in and ask us to explain more about our backstories, who we are, how you and I met, became mm-hmm. roommates, started making wacky videos, many of which. Uh, are still out there on the internet. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Um, it depends on your mood, I guess. But uh, we wanted to take an episode to kind of peel back the curtain and talk about some of that stuff that we've been so excited uh, about sharing sort of lessons and these hard strategic things. This is not going to be an episode about that as much. Mm-hmm. This is going to be more of a touchy-feely episode from the heart where we talk about, well, us, uh, who we want to be, our backstory, how we got into making videos as kids, how we um, got to be best friends in college, and kind of where we want to go from here. So if you're looking for like, you know, hard-nosed tips, you know, if, if you're looking to become some, you know, Quentin Tarantino-style director and looking for seven quick tips, this is not that episode. Go yeah, this is the wrong on. episode for that, yeah. <laughs> this is going to be more like the Jerry Springer episode where we're like, well, no, I don't know. The Oprah episode. There we go. Yeah, we're going to like sit down on this a comfy is more couch. of like the this is your life. That's a really old reference, really old show. This but is your life. we kind of chronicle um, who we are and where we've came from and where we're trying to go. So right. so the first question I have for you, Matt, is oh, no. why why is it called six stars only? Well, I'm glad you asked. No, so here's the thing. Um, I, to explain where the name Six Stars Only came from, I got to take you back a little bit. Actually, not that far. It was last year, and I was in uh, Boston uh, for this giant marketing conference. It's called Inbound. Uh, well, I was actually there for two conferences back to back. I was there for this inbound conference, went out for my work. Uh, I'm a marketer. And so we're out there with like 18,000 people. But I had actually, uh, like a day or two before inbound started, gotten tickets to another conference that was starting up their first year. It was put on by this company, Drift, which is a a live chat company. And I I super respect them. They're one of my company crushes. And so I went out there and it was incredible. I was one of the the first people to go to this conference and the people there are all about growing and learning in every area of their life. And so it was amazing. We had a full day and uh, sort of as the day wound down, we went uh, into this happy hour. Um, And it was super close with all these people from this awesome startup 
startup that I super admire. And there were people there that had started, you know, like six and seven digit companies and people, I read all their blogs and their Twitter stuff and followed their videos and listened to their podcast. And they were actually there. And I got to like have a beer with them and talk with them and, and pick their brain and ask them questions. And they were like answering me face to face in real life. And I was tripping. Yeah. It was so exciting. And so all that rambling to say, I eventually came face to face um, with this the CEO and founder of, the, of this company. Um, his name is David Cancel, and uh, so of course I asked him, "Hey, you know, if you were in my shoes, you know, you're a, a young, scrappy marketer um, looking to make a difference, and you want to, you you kind of like this development thing and this software thing, and you want to work in startups, and you're doing this marketing thing. Um, what would you do if you were in my shoes, and you're trying to grow an audience, and you're trying to?" Um, just do stuff in your career that mattered. And so he, uh, I'm sure was flailing my hands all around and I was excited <laughs> or, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I get really loud. In the old Italian hands, the Italian hands always. My Italian, um, I picked it up from you <laughs> always. Uh, and so I was talking to him and he said, he, he recommended two things. He said, uh, you should start a podcast, uh, or you should start a YouTube channel. Uh, so naturally I ignored his advice and I did both um, <laughs> or try to do both. Um, yeah. And so that's kind of where the inspiration came from. It took a few months for me to get around to actually doing it. Um, but that's kind of where um, this push for me to create a podcast or create a YouTube channel came from. I shouldn't say that isn't where the, I guess that's where the push came from. The desire has been there, but mm -hmm. that was more of like a, Oh wow. The CEO, I super admire this guy. Um, he, and, it's a little bit of backstory. Um, he and his VP of marketing have this podcast. It's one of my favorite podcasts. It's called Seeking Wisdom, where they mm -hmm. talk about yeah. personal growth and books they've read um, and how to grow a company and different marketing strategies and being authentic. Um, and so on their podcast, every episode, they're telling people to go and leave them a six-star review, and which is kind of a you know tongue-in-cheek joke because you can only leave a five-star review on iTunes. Mm -hmm. uh, but they still tell the people to leave a, a six-star review, and that's kind of their rallying cry to go leave a review. Um, and so I sort of co-opted that, uh, A, as an homage to kind of their podcast, you know, for inspiring me to actually get off my butt and go do something. And then two, it is kind of a, a callback to, you know, like the Roger, uh, and Ebert, Roger Ebert and um, what was his partner? It was Siskel and Ebert Siskel, and then yeah. Richard Roper. Uh, sorry, I'm a I'm an old fashioned movie critic nerd, I guess. So I'll, all the all the classic names, but yeah, definitely it's a riff off, off of that. So, yeah, exactly. So it's kind of a yeah, riff off of those cool. old school movie guys and the reviews that they would leave, and sort of not taking that too seriously, but also a callback. So it's yeah. you know old school movie ratings, uh, an homage to one of my favorite podcasts, um, and to the happy hour that got me off my butt to actually go make stuff. <laughs> That's cool. I think also I'm going to kind of hijack this, but I I, I like to assume. Um, so I'm going full like high school, you know, English lit teacher. I'm probably finding meaning and stuff but that's not really there. But I really want to get to a point to where I can make content that is worthy of six stars and not just five stars to where kind of like Matt, you know, I've been plagued my entire life of like, all right, I want to make stuff. But, uh, you know, I'm not really sure I, I know how or I am excited about it for a little bit, but I get busy or something. And then Matt came along and was like, all right, we have to do podcast like like we we should do this like we you know like what do you say and he asked me and i was like of course because we've tried and failed i think we mentioned that in the past few podcasts of our uh god rest their souls like other podcasts we've tried to make chillennials blogs to where I, you know like it just didn't work out and it's i was sick list. and tired of not not making stuff man like i just wanted to start making stuff and i i, I, need, I needed a reason to get super motivated. But um, I will say, I will say yeah. in all fairness to you and to us, I mean, we do try a lot of stuff and we have succeeded mm -hmm. at things as well, despite all your failures. And that's kind of the thing that I want to get at, that I want to show with this podcast is everyone, uh, whether we like to or not, we tend to fall into this myth of the overnight success story where you oh, see yeah. someone's breakout video, but you don't see the years of slip ups, of half successes, of mm -hmm. things they try that didn't quite pan out um, that led up to that big breakthrough moment, right? Behind every overnight yeah. success story, there's a decade or two or more of unrecognized work in the dark that just doesn't get seen. And we want to bring mm -hmm. that into the light. Definitely. Yeah. So I don't know why I'm being like the interviewer here, but I'm just going to ask you a question. What 
so so we have this podcast what do you want to do with it like who who do you want to be eventually in like your video creator or or just in general like making content like like what's what's the big end goal you have uh i mean big end goal is just to help people and in Mm -hmm. order to help people you have to be someone uh who has something to offer (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean if you don't (laughs) you know people who do people go to for help you know if you're trying to raise money you're not going to go to you know some guy down the street you're going to go to like the warren buffett's the bill gates the people who have a lot to offer a lot of surplus Mm -hmm. um it's the same thing with experience or if you want to learn from someone go to someone who knows something so the goal is to become someone who knows something uh the only way that happens is by trying and failing (laughs) so you gotta (laughs) you know like on the podcast Seeking Wisdom, there was talks about reps and, reps and sets, right? If you're going to work out, you know, if you're going to uh, achieve some goal, it, there's no shortcut, right? It's a lot of practice and hard work and these uh, things that you got to do over time, you know. So this is just taking the long cut. We want mm-hmm. to document as we go. Uh, it's a little Gary Vee shout out who always talks about documenting, not creating. Um, and so we want to document our process our practice, you know, as we're going, um, and just put that out in the open and hope that other people benefit. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's a really good, and that's really kind of the same thing I want to do. I just want to make, like you said, it's, you want to be able to make things that matter and to be able to help people. But like you said, you have to get to a point to where you're able to do that. Um, and being totally honest with myself, I'm much better at making videos, at writing, at doing, cause I, I want to do so many things. Uh, if anything, I want to do too many things. Uh, or I mean, I shouldn't say that I want to do a lot of things at once. So my script, my struggle has always been to just kind of focus on one. And now I really want, yeah. Cause you do a lot of stuff, but before we go there, who are you, Jay Carn? Oh, who am (laughs) I? I? Cause I want to know what do you do right now? Tell me, give me more of the low down of, uh, what you do now, what that looks like and kind of how you got there. Yeah. So, a good question uh well i like long walks on the beach no i uh so my current job uh i actually work it which is a different field than what i was used to but uh you know i'm a recent grad from ou and what i like to do um it's really lame sound saying this but i like making content it's really broad but so i have a youtube channel i'm just kidding (laughs) how dare you you're fired um even though this is your podcast but uh no i i have a youtube channel and i upload not anywhere near uh, as much as I want to, um, but it's Jake Garn. You can just go on YouTube and find some videos. I do a lot of videos, what are what are they're just like parody kind of fake history videos on food, which is a really weird market like marketed segment. Now that I'm saying that loud, that makes zero sense, but people seem to like them, so I'm making that. Uh, I also have Wait, a so blog. What's an example of one of those? Just just so the people know. Um. Well, Quick Trip, the the world famous or I guess the region famous uh, gas station has really good uh, chicken taquitos. And I just make a a fake kind of review on here's, you know, my review of the taquitos. And I hit it with like a ball and, you know, a ball and chain. And uh, it really means nothing. Like it's fake kind of like war documentary, Ken Burns cuts. And but it's just with food. It's really silly. I I love silly and kind of uh, I guess you'd call it non sequitur type of humor and just really weird stuff tim and eric ish eric andre type humor that's not overtly offensive and gross that's kind of like my bag um but yeah i like i love doing that i uh the last podcast or one of the whatever how many two ago uh, i wrote a book so i'm in the process of i paid someone to edit it so it's in the last round of editing i got the cover made so wrote a book uh i'm just doing a lot of stuff um and I'm still trying to – my focus now is I want to make blog posts regularly uh, and tie that in with making videos. So I want to make videos on YouTube and tie it in with a blog post and kind of do a whole kind of uh, almost inboundy. I don't know. Matt's the marketing genius. I'm just I'm just some guy. But, uh, yeah, I love making YouTube videos and blogs. I'm, my focus now is to tie them together uh, and to make as good of content as possible. Um And where do you want to go with that eventually? Like if you could have your dream job right now, anywhere doing anything and get paid for it, money is no object. What would you be doing, Jacob Arndt? I, so my big goal, I would love to do this. I would love to write for a TV show. Um, What kind of TV show? I love comedy or really just any kind of TV show. But uh, it'd be to have 
a Netflix show or just it, basically any sort of show and to be the I guess the head writer. Um, I want to say the showrunner, but I think Matt and I both so saw. Uh, yeah, no, we we saw a documentary kind of on a tangent here. It looked like the most stressful exhausting looking job I've ever seen in my entire life. So eh, a showrunner, maybe not, but uh, I would really love to just write for a TV show that that would be, it seems really small. You know, if you could do anything, but I would love to just make a comedy, you know, be, be part of making something. Um, ever since I saw, uh, here's another documentary. Um, was it too funny to fail with Danny Carvey? Even that's a horrible example. Incredible documentary. Incre- I totally recommend that. Uh, even though it, it turned out horribly, I, I guess it for all the people involved in the end, it worked out for the best. But um, for the people who haven't being- seen Too Funny to Fail, it's mm-hmm. basically the story of the Dana Carvey show. Which, if you don't know who Dana Carvey was, he was basically SNL star in what eighties, nineties, um, uh, somewhere in there. Yeah, like late eighties, early nineties. Yeah, late eighties. Kind of, yeah. Um, uh, he was absolutely huge, left the show to go start his own uh, just sort of off the wall uh, comedy sketch show. And mm-hmm. he just some of the no names, quote unquote, he had on there who hadn't really had a big break yet were Steve Carell, Stephen Colbert. The lead writer was Louis C.K. Um, Jimmy Fallon was almost on the show. Just this long list of these amazing actors, amazing writers. Oh, Robert Smigel, Robert the dude Smigel. that does uh, Triumph, yeah. Triumph, yeah, it was just a star-studded cast, man. Yeah, it, it was incredible. And but because they were just a little bit too edgy, they were on a mainstream network. It completely crashed and burned in a spectacular way. Um, and they kind of recount that on mm-hmm. this documentary, which is yeah. just incredible. Everyone should go stop this podcast, throw it out of your car window, <laughs> turn around, Pause it, yeah, cancel work, go watch it. It's so good. <laughs> No, yeah, I mean, obviously, my my goal is for it to not be a total failure like the Dan and Carvey show was. I mean, it it all worked out for the parties involved in the end, um, but just to make something that's cutting edge and ahead of its time, and in an ideal world, would be really popular and not be canceled. So that's kind of my uh, big picture and dream. Uh, how about you? Have you already answered that? Did I already ask you I, that? I, what I, your, I, your I got dream all sentimental, job? and then I totally dodged the question. Heck. Um, but my real answer, I guess, to that, you know, besides just being, you know, doing something that matters and helping people, um, is I'd like to start my own software company. Um, Ooh. I've been enamored with SaaS for a while, uh, which, if you don't know, SaaS just stands for Software as a Service. Um, so Sass. it's sort of these subscription services you buy into, like Netflix. You pay, you know, a monthly subscription to. Um, and they provide a service, um, and it, the service is you know through software. And so I love learning about creating these, uh, you know, coding them up, leading teams to create them, how you market them. I think there's so many amazing lessons to be learned, uh, and I just got hooked on it when I was in uh, college. I just got hooked on these Y Combinator. Uh, Remember what's correct? Um, th- this Y Combinator class uh, called "How to Start a Startup," and so they brought in all these amazing founders. You know, the founder of Stripe, with this is global uh, payment processor. Uh, you know, Peter Thiel, uh, who is uh, the CEO of PayPal, and now has like the number four like largest uh, private companies in the world. And just all these amazing entrepreneurs and thinkers. Um, and so I would love to. I just love learning about their stories and. Seeing the amazing things that they've created and i would love to start a great company like that that helps a lot of people that makes a difference yeah. in the world um and so that's the dream and so i am actually started here in about a week i'm about to start my first job at a startup doing marketing uh. um, and so i'm super pumped about that um Golf and the goal is eventually start my own and so all the storytelling um all the videos podcasts it's all to me it's all connected people mm. want to to connect with a story that's bigger than themselves, you know, whether, you know, it's in their fitness, you know, th- things like joining a community and getting involved in CrossFit or in weightlifting, or whether it, it you know, it's in your business, you want to know that you're joining an amazing company that's going places and doing great things. I, I think so much um, of what we want to be connected with, of what we want to do to find meaning and purpose in life um, is connected to good stories. And I yeah. want to learn how to tell those better and help other people tell those better. Yeah. So eloquent. So much more eloquent. Mom was just like, I want to make stuff. Mm-hmm. But that's good too. Um, well, my voice cracked now. What? If, We're what just getting really emotional here? up in here. <laughs> Let me start crying. Um, it's true though. Man. Uh, so, how did we meet? 
for real though. <laughs> That's actually I, honestly, a tough. It, I don't know. It, you know, even though like we're being recorded, it, it seems like we've known each other for like a decade, but it's really five or six years. Have we known each other for a decade? No, we can't. No, have. not even close. How old yeah. would we be? Like thirteen? No, we couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Not no, I mean, what is the we met? So we both went to the, the University of Oklahoma. I went to the same church. Yeah, and the same university. In the same church. I mean, it's not like it was like dismissing it, but we um we met, and I don't. There wasn't like a seminal like that was the moment I knew Matt and I were going to be friends necessarily. I think in my brain, I remember we talked about Arrested Development some at like our church group and I was like this guy gets it because I had just got turned on to like Arrested Development and I was like this is like the top form of art in comedy world. Let's be honest so everyone like, who has seen Arrested Development has done the Ron Howard voice to narrate their life in some oh, part. No, definitely. Just leave some conversation. <laughs> well that went well it didn't. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> B- basically just my life. Um, so yeah we eventually we became roommates um, and, you know, we just kind of bonded more and more. I think that's when we first started. That's one of the first times we made a video together. My voice is cracking. Jeez. Was that when we made or you made that like that pizza video or not the pizza video, the uh, the crazy knife man, like silent film? I think so. Yeah. So hold on. Maybe. Yeah. So in college, I was getting involved in um, all these, you know, video side projects. Mm-hmm. I was a... Uh, originally, how should we do this? Should we go back to college, or should we just go all the way back? It's when we were looking yeah, at us. I guess I guess we can just tie it in with how did you first, like, from your youth, when did you first kind of get into making videos or just making stuff? Like, how early did that start? And I guess we can kind of go back from there and yeah, go all up the way to back. College Dang, age. okay, all the way back. So we're gonna stop, turn it back. Um, when I was like six years old, I can remember grabbing our vcr vcr uh, tape recorder you know like the big chunky ones the camcorder that, yeah they're like the size of a cereal box and oh, you would grab yeah, those weird. suckers they have and like the, like the stethoscope looking deal you can like lift them up yes, those things were exactly Asian. i had that uh, and so i would grab that and i would just record my siblings uh i would record them playing video games or something dumb like that and like give commentary over it um and and that was amazing and so i i used that i would take photos and get them developed and i thought that was amazing um once we got our first iMac in when I was in middle school, that was incredible. Uh, just screwing around with GarageBand and making movies and iMovie. Oh, that was the best. It was the absolute best. And so I would simpler create, times. Yeah, I, I'd do like parodies of Indiana Jones with my brother like sliding down the slide and like pushing this beach ball boulder after him and putting the soundtrack in. It was a, it was amazing. It was a blast. Um, and so did that. Just worked on silly stuff, you know. But it's always. It's always fun looking back. I need to dig those mm-hmm. up sometime. That'd be a good, a good post them. Yeah. Oh, How no. far you've came from a uh, fake Indiana Jones to uh, to making your own software company. Exactly. Eventually. Um, so did that for a while. Um, once I got into high school, I started getting uh, a little more serious in in some ways. Some of the entrepreneurship and the video stuff and the creator stuff started to blend together. So um, went on a couple uh, like missions trips. Um, one, I went to Brazil twice and then I went to go, uh, serve German refugees, um, in college. And for pretty much all those trips, I, I would like film school plays, label the DVDs, um, and then sell them to parents and make a profit back. Or I would do freelance photography, or I would just find different ways to, uh, sort of use the creative skills I'd built up to uh, turn a quick profit and not a ton, you know. Uh, so I, I, I would build websites, I would do video stuff, do photo stuff, just kind of a mix between all of it, and just scrape together enough to be able to go travel on those trips and help people. Um, and so I, I could tell I kind of had a, a knack for that. I, I took creative writing classes in high school, um, and those were just an absolute blast. Being able to just let loose and get feedback from people, and and get like learn from people and teachers who actually knew what they were talking about, and would and would give me good feedback on my work, um, and that was super fun. Do you ever have any classes or, or stuff like that when you were growing up? Uh, kinda. I had. I was really big into like drama in high school um, and middle school to an extent. I was in a competitive drama, which I hated. So it was like, I don't know if you ever did that, but you basically just went and you basically went to just auditions 
and you would be like judged by like three adults. So I was like, man, I, you, know, you know, as a kid, I really wanted to be an actor because like, man, you know, just movies. I was enamored with movies. Uh, the first movie I ever saw, I guess I, the first movie I ever remember seeing uh, was Jurassic Park. And I was like, all right, Steven Spielberg is the goat. Uh, even though I, I don't think people said that back in 97. They should have. But uh, they should have. I was way ahead of my time. But I was like, man, I, I, I really want to be a director. This is like my thing. And like you, you know, I, I picked up a camcorder and me and my, my brothers would make just like these dinky little videos. Uh, I filmed like my action figures and stuff. God, I was a true artist back then. But no. And then there is something came along at the early 2000s called Digital Blue. And I don't know. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. It was just this handheld kind of like docking station you have for like your Windows 98 piece of absolute garbage the, the like quality webcam, you're looking kinda? back it's kind of like a webcam you can like lift it up and film it like like it was like a stick it was really bizarre like just go online and google digital blue and it'll give you like like a tiny little built-in editing software but me and my friends in middle school lost our minds we just made all of these videos uh and it was just a blast like just super silly uh, i eventually got into high school and that was when Around, I guess it was 2000. When did YouTube first come around? 2006 was that when it first started? Uh, I remember 2007, I 2008. YouTube was starting to get like huge. Um, and Balloon Shop was this channel on YouTube. Yes, I remember Balloon Shop. Oh my gosh! And I was like, "That's that's it. I, I, we have to make a Balloon Shop." So me and my friends made this uh, YouTube channel called the Wayne and Team Combo. I don't know. I don't even remember why the name came about. But we made these funny little videos, and kids in my middle school raved about them. My voice is cracking so much. I'm getting so emotional right now. But people seem to like it, and I was like, huh, this is fun. People seem to like it. I enjoyed doing it, so we kept on doing it. Um, eventually, they went into college, and then I went into broadcasting, uh, creative media production. Sounds like a finger pain. That's like the name of the, uh, you know, of the degree. But I went to more kind of intensive classes for. I didn't you know make my own short film. Uh, I had a screenwriting class. That was a blast. That's when I first realized, man, I love writing. I love making stories. Um, but yeah, just making, like you said, it's just making stories because everyone loves a good story. I love the writing aspect of a story, coming up with the initial idea, filming it, doing editing. And that's kind of when I realized that I want to do this in some capacity for like the rest of my life. And my goal is I want to be able to make a living off of doing that. Um, and that would be a good podcast in the future for the uh, A Thousand True Fans. That's something well off in the future. But I just love making stuff. And it came about from a dinky little camcorder called a Digital Blue. God, that! thank God none of those videos survived because they were they were nightmares. But uh, yeah, and look at look at who I am now. I've... Uh, I've increased in quality only about a half percent, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> per day, maybe per day, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, amazing. That's, that's where it all began. Man, I forgot about the class stuff because I definitely had some classroom inspired, like high school videos. I remember there was an anatomy project where she said, you know, she you went down the that. list oh. and she's like, oh, you know, you can create a PowerPoint presentation because you know you're you need to pretend you're 40 years old and sad uh or you can i don't know write a paper or create a diorama you know something like that and so but the one i immediately jumped to was you can create a video and it, i just looked at my buddy you know who was also kind of thought weird like i did yeah had, had the same warped sense of humor i guess um <laughs> we would just create weird videos so we thought oh like we're we're gonna create a video about hormones we can definitely personify this. I've so, seen this video. You've showed me this video. Everything from like tackling each other down a hill to simulate adrenaline to creating like awkward disappearing hugs, uh, like with dopamine and and just like weird stuff. Like we walk down to the middle of the rain to simulate some other depressing hormone, yeah. and just just but just the reaction from the class and the anticipation, just getting to show it. Uh, which admittedly, I may have been the only one that actually loved that, but well, that's not true. Everyone else did love it. Um, but just getting that validation, that feedback, and the challenge of having to create something, um, mm -hmm. I think that was a, more of a turning point than I realized. Yeah, no, that was such a good point about having that option of okay, you can like write a report, 
PowerPoint video and my ears would immediately perk up and it's like, okay, I have to make a video. It has to be hilarious. All of like the seventh graders are going to freaking love me. Um, and they did because I was, I mean, I mean, I was just, I was the coolest seventh grader. I'm just kidding. I had like Bieber hair. It was, it was, it was a rough time being in seventh grade, but yeah, it was just, that's really kind of where it began was just, I loved making stuff and getting that feedback of like, I kind of like, you know, hiding like the the edge of the room and seeing like the people laughing and enjoying. I was like, yes, this is my true calling. Um, as crazy as it sounds, but that's, that's really kind of where it began. I don't know. That's amazing. Humble beginnings. And then in college, I know for me, it was a whole new phase because I graduated high school. I went to a a private high school where it was very like English heavy. And so we did a lot of reading, a lot of writing. So we'd read a lot of the classics, you know, Frankenstein. We would read uh, Plato. Uh, We would, Mm. you know, the Republic. And we'd read all all this really good stuff. We learned how to read history. I had to learn Latin. Um, Mixed feelings about that. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But overall, it was a really great experience, and it, it made me a really strong reader, strong writer. And so when I got into college, I thought, aha, I'll become an English major. And then before I even got in my first class, I realized I do not want to be an English oh, major. Yeah. Uh, it just didn't seem right. And so I thought, well, okay, I'll make the big bucks. I'll just be a, a journalism major. Uh, and then I... <laughs> <laughs> Pretty quickly realized, you know, I went to the school paper for a semester and turned out some stories and realized this doesn't feel right. I don't know. I got bored. And so yeah. I decided to go to public relations. And that's what I graduated with my degree in. But it still just felt kind of like a lot of fluff and not enough oomph, you know. I, mm-hmm. I felt like I wasn't really moving the needle on anything. And so I got a little taste through what am I like 17,000 internships. I think I did like five or six internships. You had so many. You had like two or three at a time, I remember. And Just three. We, One semester. Yeah, and like the other roommates, we had to have pretty much like we had to have like an intervention. Not really, but of course Matt would be so – Matt's the hardest worker ever. But just like he'd be so exhausted like Matt. You have to go to bed. You're like passed out on the couch. Like, please go to bed. It's like, no, it's okay, guys. We're like, guy, I've never had to have like a talk with someone that was working too hard and told Matt. So props to you. I mean, kind of. Kind of. Kind of. I mean, like you've worked way too hard, but I mean, I guess it's between the two of us. I feel like we average out. Yeah. No. Yeah. With my just like, yeah. Because I mentioned a few times that my I had like the exact opposite kind of like I didn't I didn't have an internship until like my almost my senior year of college, I was just like total coast master. I didn't do anything, um, wasn't at any clubs. I was like, yeah, I'll just do it later. And then I realized I was like, oh yeah, I'm 24 years old. I need to get my 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 rear and gear and start doing stuff. So we kind of leveled each other out a little bit. That's so true. I kind of got the. Uh, lesser end of the deal i'm 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 working on getting to that level but um yeah you want to intern for me i can find i would would you can have your three internships now i can make that happen triple intern yeah (laughs) um i mean i say that but I, I remember all these projects would come up in journalism school because, you know, you, we had uh, access to all this video gear I didn't have before. I had access to these uh, award winning uh, video journalists and I got to take their classes. And so I would end up doing things like I created a podcast episode for a class. And admittedly, it was kind of terrible. Uh, but, you know, I started like a, a mini website and a blog. I started um, some goofy videos and different things. I. I got. I just kind of got to dip my toes in a little bit of everything, um, and and learn the basics of what works in a video, um, and be around people that challenged me, and and I got mm. to kind of um, taste that, and I liked it, but I could tell like I wasn't quite there, and so I just needed to go practice and and try some different stuff, and so off and on you know i would try it whenever i did actually apply myself to creating videos they turned out pretty well and so one of the ones mm-hmm. i think we did there was like this silent film where we we're doing tight edits and we were uh like really ex- trying to tell a story with that and it actually turned out okay for the, uh, mm-hmm. the equipment and the skill and, and what i had at the time um but from there it it's been a journey of learning okay where do i want to go professionally long term okay how can i uh bring my video skills underneath that to help me go further and also to help mm-hmm. other people at the same time. And then I guess that kind of brings me to now um, in yeah. a rambly sort of way. But what about you? Once you got to college, what did your video creation sort of journey and process look like? Yeah. So 
my freshman year of college, I actually wasn't at OU. I was at uh, Arkansas in Fayetteville, not really knowing what I wanted to do. I, I kind of had the same process of, okay, I like to write. I like, you know, writing and stuff. Um, so I learned that, you know, my senior year of high school. So I was originally going to be a, like a journal. I think maybe it was English at first and almost like the same kind of path or it was English at first. And I was like, ah, this isn't really my thing to, I might want to be, uh, I don't know, like I, I kind of wanted to go into like the journalism field. Uh, and then I think I took, I can't remember the name of the class, but I remember thinking it was just like the lab. I don't know. I don't know. Like if you know what class I'm talking about, uh, I'm not going to name names, but just it was like the driest class. And I had like a lab instructor. It was just like, this is this how many, is not how for much me. actually video. How many videos did you actually make that year that were you were proud of in that class? None. I, well, it's harsh. and th- this is a whole un- like, this is like a whole other tangent. But I, I think a lot of it, like I mentioned earlier, um, I, I didn't put in the effort, so I didn't get much out. Hmm. So um, the classes weren't necessarily geared towards like what I wanted. But I also didn't put forth the effort because I was like, this is stupid, you know. But I, so I didn't make anything I was I was proud of. And then, like I mentioned, I, I really wanted to be um, a director. So, you know, when I was little and then I kind of gave that up for a little bit. And then when I got to OU, because like you said, there were so many resources, these awesome cameras and everything. And there were some pretty good contacts to where, hey, uh, I was asked to be on the set of Straight Outlaws, which is I don't know if it's still running on Discovery Channel, but it's kind of like this. Um, reality show it's scripted but where they do like street races and so I worked on a set like a professional set for the first time doing that um, and working on like kind of small film sets and it was really interesting I I learned a lot of stuff really fast but it kind of made me realize that I like kind of more of the I mean not that I didn't like um, you know straight laws and like a bigger set I really enjoyed kind of this small tight you know, where I was in control of a lot of stuff as opposed to, because I mean, I was just a PA, uh, a production assistant where you, you know, like you just make coffee anyway. But on like the smaller kind of, uh, you know, short films that would help kids, you know, my classmates make, it was really cool because you would have to wear a lot of hats. You would have to be a gaffer. You'd have to help the lighting. You would have to help, you know, shoot. You would have to, you know, do a sound. You would have to you do a lot of You just realize things. how much work goes into it. But then on the other Definitely. side, how good it can be, how exactly how, you, yeah. you see what's possible. Yeah, exactly. And, and I saw, and, and this is kind of a bad, I mean, it's a good example. So Caffeine, which is a video that both Matt and I, Matt pretty much, he was the reason like it got made. So I had for my capstone, it's kind of fast forwarding a little bit. Like I said, I, I, I wasn't a high effort person for a long time. I saw a little bit of like what it could be, but I just, for some reason, like I just didn't have the, you know, the motivation. I, I didn't use effectively all the resources I had. And then I had my uh, my capstone, which admittedly was a super easy class. That Ralph, shout out to Ralph Bellevue. Uh, we man. didn't do jack ish. We just got really like metaphysical with like what is seeing and kind of stuff like that. Like hmm, you know, but, like we didn't have to write any papers really. But I had, I had a final video for, project. I, he taught like, my my first class at college. One of the assignments was go to the museum, find <laughs> a picture. <laughs> stand in front of the picture for 40 minutes and write what you see. And it was like, it was actually really good. You know, it's an exercise in mm-hmm. focus, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. It was actually good in a Zen like kind of way, but yeah, it, that's the kind of guy he is. He's like ghost. Oh, yeah. portrait. You know, it's like Mr. Miyagi of media theory. It's, it's true. Really yeah. I, yeah. It's very media theory uh, ish, which is good, but it wasn't like necessarily hands on. Um, but we, I had, I had the final project, and I was okay. Here's some things that I could do, but I was, I put it off and put it off and put it off, and then I realized, okay, I had like one and like one and a half days to shoot it. So I, I think I told Matt like, okay, so I have this idea. I want to be like a fake superhero that can't fall asleep. Uh, great idea, I know. But I was like, Matt, please help me film this. I am losing my mind. I think that was the same time when I made that stupid art book, and I didn't sleep for like two days, and I was freaking out and. and almost cut myself with like a, like a exacto knife that's a whole other story but it was it was a stressful week finals week because i just was lazy and i had put it off so then we filmed it at like the the park next to our apartment 
uh, just crammed it. I did all of it in a day. Like we filmed, Matt filmed most of it. We went to the school and did like some, you know, some wanting, interview style. some basic kind of interview. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it's, so it's a total documentary and I did the editing and like, I, it was all done in a day essentially. And it turned out really, really well, like surprisingly well for the amount of effort. And we put I into thought, it. <laughs> man, no. Yeah. Cause like we had to put a lot of effort, but it kind of, my mindset was, man, if I just tried like this a lot, it sounds so sad, but it's true. But if I tried like this more often, I can make a lot more stuff, like better things. And I could do it to where I don't feel like I'm about to die because I put it all off and like, I would actually plan better in the future and stuff. And that was the first time I saw like, man, however, like how much you get out of something is directly in line with how much you put into something. So the more effort you put in, you know, the better it will be. And like me, like you're still learning a lot. Like you may not be great at it at first. Having that mindset, you learn so much faster and you get so much better like way off in the future. So I saw that and I was like, man, I want to make better stuff because I was honestly not not trying to be a total like arrogant a hole, but it was but it was one of the better videos in the class. And not even lying, I don't know if that is an indictment of I like take the course. Complete credit for that. No, but, no, Matt like was basically like he was he, he was. And he basically like directed it. I mean, I had like the I wrote it and like I did like editing and stuff. But but that, I will say that was actually a really fun partnership because also really one of I I wouldn't say a flaw. What one of the areas where you're much stronger than me is uh, in sort of this off the wall creative side. You have much more of this natural humor. You have a, a way to put a twist on things, a fresh perspective, an angle that I don't always have. I'm much more of like an executor, plan it out in these ways. Eye for detail, uh, rapid yeah. growth, sort of thing. And so, if, if it were up to me, it would probably be like I remember the videos I made were like, you know, way serious or businessy, which is still. If you look at our two channels, I mean, it's still totally the it's case. It's totally, it's totally different. But yeah, like we took both our strengths because um, Matt, like the the cinematography angle, which you're much better at than I am, honestly, came through you you know, taking pictures for people and doing that for, so like you, you gain that, that skill over time and doing all that stuff to where when we kind of both met, we were like, Oh, this is a really good product. And there was a lot of people like a whole bunch of the students were pretty much telling me, I, I don't know if they were surprised, but like, man, that was really good. Like that was honestly in, in and shock. <laughs> they were in shock. Like, yeah, because like we didn't really, no one really tried that class. Um, to be fair to me, I mean, it was a good class, but we didn't really make any videos. So that was really the only video. And I mean, out this all another tangent. But yeah, everyone was like, man, this is really good quality. And like Ralph, the professor was like, I think he was kind of shocked. Like, man, you actually like made a really good, really good video. So um, yeah, that was like one of the most proud uh, kind of videos I, I helped make in like my college career. And it's sad that it came doing it in like 12 hours like my senior year of college almost but it it really kind of propelled me into okay i need to like adjust kind of my mindset and my career and my life like my goal to putting this amount of effort into everything i do that way it might not be a great product at, you know like at the start but eventually i can be really proud of all the stuff i make um as opposed to just like yeah whatever i'll just make it later and it turning out to be crap essentially which is like 90 percent of like my well and even a lot of the videos that we've made you know better, together better, uh that yeah. sorry go ahead but, i mean I, that's basically it we're just i want to make better stuff and um you know and like working with matt like we both kind of like bring each other up to like that next level to work you know we kind of help each other out or you know maybe we're not strong in certain areas uh, and vice versa to where we can bounce off ideas and that's really the first time when i realized man really making stuff with matt's cool and it's really really good quality as well so that's kind of where um our collab really kind of took off with a lot of stuff yeah and i will in say my opinion. E even on the videos that maybe weren't as production strong we still always just had a blast making videos together i always think of the uh do you remember how to talk to women oh yeah that was really fun we almost burned our apartment down but yeah was, that's was... the one where we lost all our deposits on all of the prison furniture at our apartment uh but we were just creating this ridiculous how-to video that was kind of an anti-how-to where how much gel did you put in your hair for that video because it was a lot uh, it was an almost an entire thing of jail. My hair was dyed uh, blonde for some reason. I don't, I oh, was a yeah. really, 
was wrong with me in college? I had like pink hair at one time, purple, blue hair. Those were bets. I, uh, most of them. I think I just dyed my hair blonde. Anyways, what, what was you, wrong with me? Anyway, yeah. You looked like a 30 year old homeschooler, and you're just making this video and just awkwardly trying to uh, pick up a, a girl, <laughs> just our friend who generously gave her time to sit on our couch and <laughs> be uh, just listen to terrible pickup yeah, lines I, and try not to crack up. Uh, and so we made this like stupid video, almost burned our apartment down, but it was still fun. And at the end, uh, even if it was just a couple of our friends. Just riffing on it. We still had such a good time just working on it. And I think yeah. that collab, just the practice, seeing how fun it could be, um, it, I mean, it does make a difference. And and yes. so when it, uh, when it came time to, you know, we're, now that we're both graduated, we've moved on to new stuff. I'm married. Um, you know, you're living in a different city. It's still a no-brainer to create stuff like this together mm-hmm. because it's... A, a, it's a way to stay connected, and and two, it's just such a blast. And I learn more blast, yeah. uh, when I have that challenge because I think you need to put yourself in situations that challenge you. And if you don't mm-hmm. have a forcing function, if you don't have people around you that are going to do that, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, I mean that's true. I definitely like I I would not be where I am now if Matt like if I didn't have you to like challenge me because essentially like like we mentioned earlier, we were basically in terms of the effort and like, you know, kind of mindset level coming to internships and just a lot of things, we were so totally different. And I was like, man, I need, I need some of that. Maybe not to where I was like passed out on the couch effort level, but of like, man, I need to get, like, get my rear in gear. I need to get focused. I need to be an adult. And I, I, I just need to hop on and just make things that matter. And yeah, like you said, being uncomfortable, like I've, been super uncomfortable for like years and years doing things that I had really no idea what I was doing and I was really kind of worried but I've grown so fast I, I kind of had a late start to the game but even in like just these past maybe one and a half two years of just okay I know so much more now I'm so much more capable and confident in doing things that I've never done before um, and that all kind of arose out of doing this collab. And, and that's kind of what this podcast is as well. I had no idea how to run a podcast. I had done voiceover for a few kind of videos in the past, but I never like done a podcast, a weekly podcast and everything to where, yeah, it's, it, this is stretching for me as well. But I've, I feel like this is just a step into being, you know, like more well-rounded as, a content creator and the skills I learned from here will directly influence and help with my, you know, my video stuff in the future. Uh, so I'm super excited about it. I'm pumped to, to make these, these podcast, pod, podcast, podcast episodes with you. I totally ruined the, uh, that no, that super introspective moment, but uh, I can see you tearing up. No, no. <laughs> Just kidding. but it is fun though, but, uh, to look back and see, you know, okay, wow. You know, that video I made, it seems so silly at mm-hmm. the time and it was but it, it, there's meaningful milestones there um, in our journey of learning to create of just having fun with it and being around people that challenge you and make you better um and so it's been amazing so far it's been a blast i've loved creating this uh, youtube channel podcast thing thanks uh dc for challenging me on that i appreciate mm. it um and thank you for coming along with me this has been a good time yeah definitely and thank you listeners and or viewers if you um, endured all that wow if you endured all that you yeah, really love us a, for almost 50 minutes but yeah um and definitely and we mentioned it earlier but um leave us a five-star review matt i guess y- you should maybe explain why um, they should give us feedback and why they should give us reviews on six stars only well because we tattoo every review on jake's body i do no with exactly because i just not yeah. found that out but i'm definitely no actually that'd be disgusting that would be and we'd have to write really small because we're gonna get a lot of reviews <laughs> get so many um but yeah i mean essentially this this whole episode idea came about because we got feedback about hey who are you guys like why why should we listen to you guys and that came That's directly true. That's a serious from your answer. feedback. So, yeah, tell us what we could do better. Uh, be brutally honest. What can we do better? Um, and just 
tell us what you think because we can't get better at making podcasts. We can't get better better at making videos if if we don't get your feedback and if we don't listen to your feedback. So leaving us a review, um, writing feedback really helps us out a lot and it means a lot to us. We will read and take to heart everything that you guys are right and say um so yeah that would that would really help us out a lot to do that for us so yeah leave a review on itunes six stars only let us know what you like uh go check out we'll we'll try and drop some notes to maybe we can dig up some of these old videos some show notes yeah or at least dig uh, up some old videos yeah we can we can link those up in the show notes you can find those at six stars only.com um and you can find uh links to all that good stuff there all right. Anything yeah, else? Good. Any parting thoughts, Master J? Parting thoughts? Um, no, not really. I, I I think just start making stuff. Just be be encouraged by us. Um, maybe you feel like, all right, I've, you know, like I'm kind of left behind. Like I haven't put up, you know, a whole bunch of effort into stuff I'm making, but I really want to start making stuff. Just you know, just go for it. I think that was kind of like my biggest, my biggest hurdle was feeling like I couldn't do something or feeling like I had like a wall up or like, okay, I want to make videos, but I don't know how I want to make a podcast. I don't know how just go online and Google it and just take that step. Um, cause you're not going to get any better if you don't start. So learn from my mistakes. Uh, yeah. And and just start making stuff, guys make good stuff. I mean, try obviously, but you have to start somewhere. So yeah, just start making stuff, man. (laughs) <laughs> Dude, let's go. And let's post some more stuff this week on our channels. Let's go. Oh, man. I'm going to have to start making stuff, too. Yeah, what so, are you posting uh, this yeah. week? I'm going to uh, I'm gonna post a video on, on the old YouTube. I'm going to make a Tex-Mex, a video on Tex-Mex, and how it all tastes the same, in my opinion. It's going to be mm. – I've morphed into a hot take, like, giver. I give so many hot takes. All of my blog posts are just, like – I get, you know, the Stevie Shimmy one wasn't, but just a lot of like, you know what? I Here's my opinion because I know people will be kind of – because with food, it's it's non-offensive. Midwesterners never have opinions about but food. But it's something that all, people actually really kind of take serious. So like, it's to where I can kind of poke the bear but not actually make people angry. Uh, I hope so. I hope people don't care about Tex-Mex this much. But uh, I have some really strong opinions on it. So I'm, I want to make a video about that this week. So. That's beautiful. So I'm gonna do. Uh, sorry, what are you gonna say? I'm gonna say just so check that out. Check Boom. out the videos. It's gonna be this weekend. Keep an eye out, Jake Garn on YouTube. I am going to post a video. Uh, one of my favorite uh, bloggers has this nine dollar, or actually this free marketing bootstrap on if you're you know what website, uh, how should you create your website, what email tools should you use, how should you track your visitors and see what's working. Uh, I want to do a video version of that and go into the tools um, and go into how to actually implement that. And I want to do a quick update on that. And so keep an eye out for that. I'll have that out before next episode. It's good. Man, I think that's it. I think that's it. Nope. Party notes. All right. We'll see you guys uh, next week. Cool. Or listen to you, talk to you guys next week. Right on. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs>